Eyewitness accounts from those who have experienced the afterlife, people who claim to have gone beyond the veil and returned with an urgent message you need to hear. Is hell real? Is it a place of eternal torment? Today, a man who claims he was transported to hell and spent 23 terrifying minutes in torment. We'll talk about all that and more on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. According to a recent LA Times poll, nearly three out of four Americans believe in hell. However, just one half of 1% think they're headed there. Today's guest is a New York Times bestselling author who claims that he spent 23 minutes in hell and that he learned lessons while he was there that can literally save your life. Now, let me start by saying that when we talk about the afterlife, we are heading into some uncharted waters. We're tackling issues that many find controversial. That's why I need to tell you at the outset that the testimonies that are shared by today's guests don't necessarily reflect the views of either myself or Jewish Voice. So please keep that in mind before you pick up the phone or fire off any emails. Please welcome Bill Weiss and his wife, Annette. Hi, Annette. Welcome. So nice to have you. Bill, welcome. Bill, I want to begin by, uh, before you describe your experience being transported to hell, talk about what was going on in your life before this, this happened. Well, I was a real estate broker with my own company for 35 years. My wife worked for a builder developer. Uh, we were both involved in our church. Um, I served as a worship leader in our church and taught occasionally on Proverbs and wisdom and so forth. Um, so conservative person. Normal. Uh, normal. <laughs> normal. We had been married life. one year. Until. <laughs> we had been married just one year. Uh, when this experience occurred. So living happily, everything going great. And, uh, you know, I've never studied a topic of hell. I've had no interest in it. I've never gone to dark movies. I've never drank. I've never taken drugs. Uh, nothing like that. So uh, everything was just normal. And I'm sure the last thing you expected to do was to stop your real estate business and travel around the country telling people what happened. Oh, I had no uh, plan to do that at all. I uh, only had told one close friend what had happened. And he invited me to his Bible study, and I went reluctantly three months later. Well, it spread from there, and we began getting invited all around the country for the next seven years. My wife and I paid our own way. We never took any money from anyone, and there was no book then. And then the publisher came to us, and they asked us to write the book. Well, when exactly did this happen? November 23rd, 1998, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, incredible. Annette, just describe the state that you, you found your husband in. I woke up at 323, and the reason I know that is I looked at our digital clock. Now, Bill woke up at 3 a.m. to get a glass of water, and I awoke to screams coming from our living room. Now, keep in mind, Jonathan, we were married one year at this point. And I you must have been thinking, who, what, who did I marry here? Well, or he was having some you kind know, of you're, a You're so medical. startled and shocked when you first hear screams like that. So I just came down the hallway and I found him in a state that I have never, ever seen him in. He was on the living room floor in a fetal position. He was holding his hands to his temples. He was screaming in terror. I thought he was dying. I thought, I've got to call 911 emergency services. Of course. And, and what happened then? Did, did you go ahead and call 911? I was about to, but he began to cry out. Bill began screaming, pray for me, pray for me. The Lord has taken me to hell. So when he said those words, I actually felt a relief inside, a peace. And I know that sounds strange, but I know that had to be from God. And I just started to pray for him. I just, I'm picturing my wife going through that experience. Now, Bill, you say what happened to you was uh, a vision, not a dream or near-death experience. Explain why. Well, first of all, I saw my body lying on the floor, and uh, so it was not a dream. It was actually an out-of-body experience that would be classified as a vision. You remember in 2 Corinthians 12, 1 and 2, Paul, when he was caught up into heaven in a vision, he said whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. Well, the Lord just showed me that I left my body. So that's how I know it was a vision. What were you doing before the vision happened. You were out of bed. You were in the living room. Right. Well, we had come home from a prayer meeting that night. We attended every Sunday night. Went to bed. Nothing unusual about the night. I got up at 3 o'clock to get a glass of water. 
That was it. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel. And it was getting hotter and hotter. And then I landed on this stone floor in an actual prison let, cell let just in be hell. Clear. So you're, you're going to get a glass of water. Right. And this, you're, you're hit with this? Yeah. Just out of the clear no blue. No explanation. I was fully awake and cognizant. I was not dreaming. And I landed on this actual stone floor, rough hewn stone walls and bars in an actual prison cell, but more like a dungeon in hell. And the heat was so far beyond the ability to sustain life. I wondered, how could I be alive through this? How did I get here? Why am I here? I noticed I had no strength in my body whatsoever. Uh, completely void of any kind of strength. Any movement took tremendous effort. And this is where I first found myself. But, you know, since then, Jonathan, I have found out that every single thing I saw is already in the Bible. So, you know, I'm not here to convince anyone to believe my experience. I'm just here to convince them to believe the Word of God. That's the only thing that matters. We had a statistic before that I opened the show with that three quarters, 75% of Americans that were polled, I think this was a Barna right. poll, be believe that there is a hell. But right. What is it, one half of 1%? Right, it's actually less than one half of 1% believe they're going to go there. Yeah, well. And, and, and Jesus said in Matthew 7 that many are going there and few are going to heaven. It's a wake-up call. We've got to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to go into specific detail on Bill's story, and he is going to give us hell literally as he continues to share his amazing story. We'll be right back. Jewish Voice is dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world, people who often die from medical conditions that here in the West could be easily treated. Even more important than the physical relief our medical help provides is the fact that our practical demonstration of His love opens the door for us to share the good news. Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Ethiopia to help the impoverished Jewish community there. Our volunteer medical professionals will provide medical care, dental care, and eye care, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Will you help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. As you respond with a gift of $40 or more, we'll send you Bill Weiss's book, 23 Questions About Hell, Everything You Want and Need to Know. With this book, you'll discover answers to your most pressing questions about hell, such as, why wouldn't God allow a good person into heaven? Is the fire in hell real or metaphorical? And how can I be assured that I won't go to hell? Each answer is based on the Word of God and will give you a clear understanding of who is going to heaven and who is not. Included in the book is a companion DVD that details Bill's dramatic first-hand account of his 23 minutes in hell. In addition, we'll also send you Jonathan Burness's teaching, The Role of Israel in Last Days Prophecy. In this in-depth two-CD set, Jonathan covers such topics as what does Satan know that we don't know? And what one single event must take place before Jesus can return? Please call, click, or write now. And please be as generous as possible. When you respond, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to very needy Jewish people. And you'll also receive 23 questions about hell, everything you want and need to know, along with the role of Israel in last day's prophecy. Two ministry resources that will bless, inspire, and prepare you for the future. Thank you. I'm back with New York Times bestselling author Bill Weiss and his wife Annette, and we're discussing what happened when he was transported to hell for 23 minutes. Bill, I want to get right back into the details. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You've come back from a prayer meeting. You're walking into the kitchen to get a glass of water, and you're hit with this vision. Right. I was pulled out of my body. So in a vision, you can actually travel like Paul and John did to heaven. And, and this is not to compare my experience with any of these great men, but just to give a scriptural basis. But I was pulled out of my body, found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel. And I entered this open cavern area and then landed on an actual stone floor, rough-hewn stone walls and 
bars, actually. I was in a prison cell. Uh, but look, filthy, stinking, dirty, smoke-filled, like a dungeon. I had no idea how I got there. Nothing was explained. I was fully awake and cognizant. And the heat was so far beyond the ability to sustain life. I, so you perceived I, extreme heat extreme out heat. of your body. Yes. And I noticed, again, that I was in a prison cell. There's scripture for all this that I'm telling about. But time's sake, we will keep going. I had no strength in my body. It was, I, what was wrong with my body? But see, Isaiah 14, 9 and 10 says, Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. They will say, Art thou become weak as we? Psalms 88, 4 talks about no strength. So that might not sound like much, but if you ever had the flu even, it was a thousand times worse. Any movement takes tremendous effort. But see, even Acts 17, 28 says, In him we live and move and have our being. So even Bill, movement comes from God. I've had that happen in dreams where I was being tormented and I was trying to force out the name of Jesus mm -hmm. to combat it and I had no strength. So I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, but this is much more intense. What happened right. then? Um, as I was lying on this floor, these demonic creatures were pacing in the cell. They were blaspheming and cursing God in extreme hatred for God. And we know blasphemy comes from the demonic realm. Revelation 13, 6 and James 2, 7 and some others. But they directed that hatred they had for God towards me. The one picked me up threw me into the wall. I felt bones break. I collapsed on the floor. I wondered, how could I be alive through this? Now, Jonathan, I have to explain it. I felt pain, but I understood most of it was being blocked. And I didn't understand that, but on the way back, the Lord explained, He allowed me to feel just a small amount of the pain so I could relate to people that it's not metaphorical. It's not a state of the mind. It's real literal pain you're going to feel. Did you hell. know that you were having a vision at this time? What, what? No, I just knew I was in hell. I, you have no question about where you're at. I mean, there's no place like hell. And uh, I had no idea how I got there or why I was there. And what about darkness? It talks about, about darkness. Right. Well, it was only light for a few minutes. Not, not a few minutes, but probably seconds. When this demon threw me into the wall, bones broke, another one dug its claws into my chest, tore, tore the flesh open. Uh, I had a body. Matthew 10, 28 says, Fear him who was able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Remember Luke 16, the rich man had a tongue. He lifted up his eyes. You have a body, but it withstands these torments. And I noticed there was no blood or water coming from the wound. So your body was being wounded, but it wasn't There was no blood or you. water, right? You still keep alive. And, but see, Leviticus 17, 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Well, there's no life in hell, so there's no blood. And Zechariah 9, 11 says, I prisoners out of the pit where there's no water. There's no, but your body withstands these kind of torments. This is, I think, a point of criticism about the, the, the testimony, about the book that you talk about demons that are enjoying tormenting people. Give us a scriptural For foundation. First, first of all, I said there was a satisfaction. It wasn't really enjoyment. It was a certain satisfaction that these demons seemed to uh, derive from the torment. But some people said, but Bill, aren't they in torment? But remember Jesus in Matthew 8, 29, when he went to cast out a demon, the demon said to him, have you come to torment us before the time? indicating their time hadn't come yet. What time were they talking about? Revelation 2010, where the demons, Satan is cast into the lake of fire after Judgment Day. So Matthew Henry's commentary and many others say that the demons right now are in partial torment, not in full torment. So they have the ability to torment people in hell. You've had to go back after this experience and put this whole thing together from Scripture. Right. I, I had never studied hell, but I wanted to find out because if this was really from God, which I knew it was, but I knew then it has to be in the Bible. Everything I saw would have to be there. So I found out, I studied it for seven years and found there are over 250 verses that talk about hell. Everything I saw is already in the Bible. In fact, I did some study myself. Jesus talks more about hell than about heaven. That's right. In, That's right. The, in the Gospels. Right. 46 I don't different think, verses. I didn't realize that, That's but right. he does. Well, what else happened? I was taken out of the cell. About that time that these demons were tormenting me, it went dark. Now, it resumed its normal state of absolute pitch black darkness. I was believed it was God's presence or to illuminate it so I could see, to describe to people what it looks like, but then it resumed its normal state. And it is so dark, and it's not just a darkness like we've experienced. You could literally feel the darkness. And that's not an exaggeration. Remember, Exodus 10, 21 mentions a darkness that may be felt. So when people say they're in hell, they, they don't hear on this earth. They have, they no, have idea. no idea, right? No it's clue. just no. a different realm. I was taken out of the cell by God, but I didn't realize it was then. I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire. This pit was about a mile across. I just understood that. And it was literal flames. Again, it was not metaphorical, real literal fire. I felt the heat. I saw people, Jonathan. This is where I could first see people through the flames burning. 
and it's the most awful sight to see a person on fire. The flesh just hanging off their bones. They're screaming. The screams are so loud. You want to get away from it, but you can't for all eternity. You have to endure that. Bill, did you feel that, the, the, the burning of your body? No, I didn't have to go into the fire. I didn't, my flesh didn't melt off. But remember, I was there in a vision, so a little different than the people that are condemned there. So even worse torment than you experienced oh, yeah. out of body. Right, he only allowed me to feel a small amount of the pain and the I heat. I can't and so even forth. comprehend this. It's just it's, it's beyond It's not really comprehensible for people, but to see people screaming, uh, so the stench in hell is so foul and putrid. The worst, like an open sewer, the smell of uh, rotting flesh and demons. Remember, Jesus rebuked the foul spirits, Mark 9, 25. And, and, but also you're breathing in the smell of a burning sulfur. And you know, if you go to Hawaii to the volcano, they have signs posted where you can't go past a certain point because the toxicity of the sulfur coming up from the volcano will kill you. It's toxic. Well, sulfur is just another word for brimstone. So that's what you're breathing. Brimstone is all through the Bible. So you're breathing in this foul, putrid it's air. punishment of all of the senses. Right. H how did you get out of there? Well, as I was looking at all this horror and demons tormenting people and uh, uh, the screams and so forth, I was in this dark tunnel. And then something began lifting me up out of this tunnel. And all of a sudden, in this pitch black darkness, this bright light appeared. Now, I knew immediately who it was. I didn't see his face. I just saw the outline of a man standing in this bright, pure, holy light, like no light I've ever seen. And I just called out his name. I said, Jesus. And when I said that, he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I went out. I don't know if I died passed out. I can only explain what happened through Revelation 1.16 when John saw him. He said his countenance was bright as the sun and I fell at his feet as one dead. You're over his body by this time. No. No. No, no. no, I was still asleep. No, I'm still in the tunnel. And so Jesus, we're in the tunnel leaving hell. In this, uh, we came up through this tunnel and in this whirlwind tunnel, Isaiah 40.24, many other scriptures. But uh, then this was in the tunnel where I got to ask him some questions. I really didn't want to ask him anything, but I just want to say this first. When I, when I went out and he touched me and I came to, the first thing that hit me so strongly, Jonathan, was that I realized that because he went to the cross, I didn't have to go to that horrible place. That he gave his life for me to keep me out of there. I was so grateful for the cross. I, I, it hit me so strongly. I'll never forget that feeling. I didn't want to ask him a question. But thoughts started coming to my mind, and he would answer my thoughts. You know, Psalms 139 2 says, He answers our thoughts afar off. I thought, Lord, why did you send me to this horrible place? He said, Because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, Even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. I that statement many, surprised me because I thought all Christians believe in hell. I'm a Bible believer, so I believe in a literal hell. I just have to ask, though, a question that, that I'm sure people are wondering, and I wonder myself, to be honest. Why would God create such a terrible place? Well, he said so. In Matthew 25, 41, Jesus said that he created hell for the devil and his angels. He said he actually prepared. He used the word prepared. The same word he used in John 14, 2, where he goes to prepare a place for us in heaven or make ready. But see, he prepared it for the devil, not for man. He never intended for man to go to this horrible place. But what he did was, see, James 1, 17 says every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights. So all the good we enjoy in life comes from God. It's not automatic. So what he did in the preparation, he withdrew his attributes. You see, hell is dark because 1 John 1, 5 said God is light. There's only death in hell because John 1, 4 said God is life. There's only hatred in hell because 1 John 4, 16 said God is love. There's no mercy in hell because Psalms 36, 5 says the mercy of the Lord is in the heavens. There's no strength in hell because Psalms 18, 32 said it's the Lord that gives us strength. There's no water in hell because Deuteronomy 11, 11 says water is the rain of heaven. I can't comprehend a place completely void of God. We've got to take a break, but I do have a question that I want you to be thinking about when I come back. How could a loving God allow, if it was created for the devil and, and demons, how could a loving God allow people to go there? Uh, I, I want you to think about that and answer that when we come back. We'll be right back. Jewish Voice is dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world, people who often die from medical conditions that here in the West could be easily treated. Even more important than the physical relief our medical help provides is the fact that our practical demonstration of His love opens the door for us to share the good news. 
Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Ethiopia to help the impoverished Jewish community there. Our volunteer medical professionals will provide medical care, dental care, and eye care, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Will you help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. As you respond with a gift of $40 or more, we'll send you Bill Weiss's book, 23 Questions About Hell, Everything You Want and Need to Know. With this book, you'll discover answers to your most pressing questions about hell, such as, why wouldn't God allow a good person into heaven? Is the fire in hell real or metaphorical? And how can I be assured that I won't go to hell? Each answer is based on the Word of God and will give you a clear understanding of who is going to heaven and who is not. Included in the book is a companion DVD that details Bill's dramatic first-hand account of his 23 minutes in hell. In addition, we'll also send you Jonathan Burness's teaching, The Role of Israel in Last Days Prophecy. In this in-depth two-CD set, Jonathan covers such topics as what does Satan know that we don't know and what one single event must take place before Jesus can return. Please call, click, or write now. And please be as generous as possible. When you respond, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to very needy Jewish people. And you'll also receive 23 questions about hell, everything you want and need to know, along with the role of Israel in last day's prophecy. Two ministry resources that will bless, inspire, and prepare you for the future. Thank you. I'm back with New York Times best-selling author Bill Weiss and his wife Annette. And I left off with a question that I know many people are thinking, and that is, why would a good and loving God allow people to go to a place of such torment? You know, really the question should be, how can a loving God allow bad people into heaven? Because none of us are really good. Romans 3.10 uh, says that we're all unrighteous. There's none good. So that's really the truth. But the point is, God gives man a free will to choose. And he tells them exactly how to stay out of hell. And, but he says in Revelation 21.8, all unbelievers shall have their part in the lake of fire. He tells you how to stay out. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 12.37, your own words condemn you. People say, you know, I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe it. Well, he's telling you if you don't believe it, you'll end up in hell. But he, because he loves man, he gives them that free will to choose. But to explain a little bit further why good has nothing to do with it, people think, you know, I'm a good person. I should go to heaven. Uh, well, it's just like this. If you went and found the most expensive home in the country, knocked on their door, and you said, uh, excuse me, I'm moving in with you because I'm a good person, what do you think the people would say? No, right? You wouldn't expect them to let you in. You don't know them. You have no relationship with them. Yet people go through their whole life. They have nothing to do with God. They deny Jesus as the Son of God, which he said is the only way to his house. Then at the end of their life, they say, let me in. I'm a good person. What does good have to do with it? You don't know him. You don't have a relationship with him. You see, God is not your father. He's your creator. He's not their father until they invite in Jesus as well, their the savior. The logical follow-up question is, what about people who have never heard the gospel, who live in remote places? Well, for, first of all, they are accountable for five reasons. Number one, in Romans 1, uh, God says he holds man accountable because of creation. The evidence of design is everywhere. You look at the human body, plant life, animal kingdom, universe. There's design everywhere. That points to a designer. So that person in the remote jungle, if they just say, there, there has to be a God. I want to get to know you, God. God will find a way to get to that person, either through a Bible. He put the word in writing. Uh, it's, there's a Bible. There, he gives man a conscience. We have a conscience to know right from wrong and he to know there is a God. On man's heart. He wrote eternity in man's heart in Ecclesiastes 3 and so forth. He gives man that conscience to know right from wrong. Uh, he gives Bibles. He sends missionaries, TV, radio all over the world for, to get to that man. But also in Job 33, it says he'll give man dreams and visions to keep back his soul from the pit. So that man in the mountains, if he just has a little bit of humility and says, God, I want to know who you are. Reveal yourself to me. Romans 1, 2. Right, Romans chapter 1, that the invisible or the visible speaks of that, that which yes. is invisible. Right. And he'll give that man that dream or vision to keep back his soul from the pit. Annette, Bill, thank you so thank much. You, and John. keep, keep sharing the good word. Bill knows from experience that there is a hell and it is a very real place. And that, that's why Jewish voice is here to tell people that this is all very real. We'll be right back.
Jewish Voice is going to a new and unreached part of Ethiopia to Hosanna to bring life-saving medical care as well as the good news of Yeshua to the impoverished Gafat tribe. This spring, April 26th through May 5th, we are bringing partners like you to Hosanna, which means save now. How appropriate that we're going to this part of the country where there's so many who need salvation, who need Yeshua. Please come with us. We need medical, dental, and eye care professionals. We also need prayer room and clothing distribution partners. Wherever there is a need, you can help. There's so many who are hurting and need the message and care that we have and do give. I can't tell you enough. We need people like you to come with us to be his hands and his feet, to be his love letter to the world. Please join us in Hosanna, Ethiopia. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way that we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, eye care, dental care, all completely free of charge, but most importantly, the gospel. And it's through your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. Now, as our way of saying thank you, I'd like to send you Bill Weiss's eye-opening uh, and insightful book, 23 Questions About How Everything that you want and need to know. This provides answers to your most pressing questions about hell. Along with the book is a DVD that includes Bill's dramatic firsthand account of his 23 minutes in hell. Along with the book, I also want to include a teaching that I did called The Role of Israel in Last Day's Prophecy. This is an in-depth two CD set that answers questions like, why is Satan trying to destroy the Jewish people? What does he know that we don't? And what one single great event must take place before Jesus can return? Hey, by the way, we're on Facebook. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish voice. Well, we're out of time again today. As I leave you, I want to remind you, as I always do, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says they shall prosper that love thee. This is Jonathan Bernus saying shalom and God bless you. Coming this summer, July 13th through July 20th, join Jonathan Burnus and his family on a spectacular Alaskan cruise. With a theme of Israel, the feasts and the last days, you'll experience teachings with Jonathan Burnus, musical performances from Maurice Sklar, and additional guest speakers and musicians will be joining us in some of the most breathtaking and rugged scenery in the world. To register now, call Jabez Travel at 1-888-435-3787. This is a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 